About two years ago, we talked about the speculation around a small team bringing back woolly mammoths. It's now 2025, and the now $10 billion company Colossal Biosciences has made headlines by claiming they're the first to bring back an extinct species, the direwolf, that vanished from Earth over 10,000 years ago. But did they really? Today, we're diving into three key questions about this so-called scientific bombshell. First, did Colossal actually de-extinct the direwolf, or is this clever marketing? Second, what's their real business model behind reviving extinct animals? And third, what does the future look like now that Pandora's box has been opened? The answers reveal how a well-funded hype machine might be overshadowing genuine scientific progress. Quick cliff notes, dire wolves were apex predators that roamed throughout the Americas until about 10,000 years ago when they vanished during the quaternary extinction event alongside many other large mammals, megafauna, their prey that they were perfectly adapted to take down. In 2021, geneticists made a shocking discovery. Dire wolves weren't closely related to modern wolves at all. DNA analysis revealed their lineage split from today's wolves around 5.7 million years ago, roughly when humans and chimps diverged. For context, humans and chimps share 98% of DNA, but we still tend to feel we're far more different than we are alike. So what did Colossal actually do? They extracted DNA from ancient direwolf fossils and identified 20 specific genetic changes across 14 genes they believed responsible for key physical direwolf traits. Using CRISPR technology, they modified gray wolf cells at those 20 specific sites and created cloned embryos, which were implanted into surrogate dogs. The result, three very adorable puppies named Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi, large white-coated wolves with broader shoulders and thick manes. Think of this as taking chimp DNA, editing it to be taller and naked except on the head. Would you call that a human? The scientific community isn't buying it. Scientific consensus in the weeks after their announcement is that Colossal didn't bring back dire wolves. They genetically modified gray wolves to have the most visually exciting physical traits resembling dire wolves. It's impressive genetic engineering, but not the revival of a species. What's especially notable is that Colossal has yet to publish any of their research or data in peer-reviewed journals, instead jumping straight to splashy media announcements and marketing that this is the first de-extinction in human history. This backward approach to scientific process has only increased the skepticism. So why is Colossal pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into these projects? Colossal has raised $435 million since 2021, and they reached a staggering $10.2 billion valuation in January of 2025. Their funding comes from an interesting mix. Venture capital firms focused on entertainment and games, AI investors, and weirdly enough, a lot of celebrities, including director Peter Jackson and George R.R. Martin, who's Game of Thrones series brought the idea of a direwolf into popular public consciousness. This is probably why one puppy is named Khaleesi. This funding model provides context for their approach. Big talk about mammoths and fantasy wolves that appeals to dreamers and pop culture enthusiasts. When they previously made headlines with their very cute woolly mice project, Another lucrative investment round followed. The hype machine propels them forward, building runway for future projects. Colossal CEO Ben Lamb has explained their overall approach as similar to the Apollo program, a moonshot that produced numerous valuable technologies along the way. Things like GPS, the fundamentals of the internet, semiconductors, advancements that have proved highly useful and ultimately bloomed into their own industries, industries that were previously completely unimaginable. Uh, but here's what Colossal doesn't highlight. They're far from the first to attempt de-extinction. In fact, it already happened 25 years ago. In 1999, tissue from the last Pyrenean ibex was preserved before she died. In 2003, scientists at American biotech company Advanced Cell Technology, working with French and Spanish labs, successfully cloned this animal, creating an exact newborn genetic copy of the extinct species. 
The baby died shortly after birth, but this was genuine species resuscitation, the first in history. Advanced cell technology continued their work quietly, focusing on endangered species like the gar and the bantang, Asian bovines. With minimal fanfare, Twitter didn't exist yet, their groundbreaking work received little public attention. Today, they've pivoted to applying their technology to human conditions like macular degeneration and heart failure, developing cell therapies that take a patient's cells and revert them to bioavailable stem cells. They don't have the marketing, they don't have much funding, and they're not backed by celebrities or internet hype. In fact, you don't hear much from them at all. Maybe that's what Colossal saw needed to be improved upon. Similarly, organizations like Revive and Restore, founded in 2012, have been developing genomic sequencing and reprogramming for conservation without Colossal level hype. Their mission looks forward 100,000 years to ecological diversity and they're hedging bets across all available technologies. They're supported by the National Park Service, the Nature Conservancy, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the Smithsonian, zoos with extinct and endangered species tissue banks, and interestingly, George R.R. R. Martin funds them too. Their purses are still much shallower. One of Revive and Restore's de-extinction projects is the revival of the passenger pigeon, a bird that once blacked out the skies across America just 200 years ago. They're featured in a documentary, The Resurrection Quest, that released in March of 2025. You should watch that if you want to learn more about the techniques that are in play in this industry right now. The real money isn't in creating Woolly Mammoth theme parks, Colossal's first spin-off company, Form Bio, has already raised over $30 million for biological research software. What Colossal is really doing is using headline-grabbing extinct animals to develop gene-editing technologies just in a louder, more publicly visible way than organizations that preceded them. This flashier approach raises questions. Are they advancing science significantly beyond what's already being done or primarily advancing marketing and funding strategies for biotechnology. Since Dolly the Sheep in 1996, we've been asking the same question. Just because we can alter the genetic makeup of a species, should we? De-extinction has long raised serious ethical questions about altering natural history while potentially enabling humans to rectify past harms to ecosystems. And in fact, we really want to hear what you think about this whole gene editing thing. Is it worth the risks based off of the last time we talked about it? We're pretty divided. Research from St. MU research scholars suggests the term de-extinction itself might blind us from the moral need to protect and respect non-human life by reducing urgency around preventing extinctions now. Why save species today if we can just bring them back later? In fact, this exact line of thought has been embraced by the current presidency. Following Colossal's announcement, the presidency suggested removing protections for currently endangered species. The habitats dire wolf evolved in no longer exist. Their prey species are gone, and the climate has changed dramatically. Meanwhile, over 1,300 species face extinction today, just in the US. But the elephant, or the mammoth, in the room is where this technology ultimately leads. As gene editing capabilities advance, the line between conservation, de-extinction, and creating entirely new forms of life becomes increasingly blurred. The same technologies being used on wolves today has already been applied to humans, raising profound questions about the future of our own species we know that we're unprepared to answer. What starts with bringing back extinct animals could lead to healthier humans, or designer humans. We're opening a Pandora's box of ethical dilemmas we know we're not prepared to address. The story of Colossal represents a broader trend. Scientific advancement increasingly depends not just on what you discover, but how effectively you market it. This model generates funding and public interest, but we should be careful not to confuse hype with progress. What do you think? Should we celebrate Colossal's approach to biotechnology or focus more on the less flashy conservation work happening behind the scenes? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you found this exploration fascinating, please subscribe for more deep dives into how technology is reshaping our world. Thank you for watching.